dear students i welcome you all in this class on analog and digital communication today we are going to start a new topic that is pulse modulation and in the pulse modulation we will discuss about pulse amplitude modulation in today's class since now till now we have covered analog communication in detail where we studied amplitude modulation and frequency modulation so today we are moving to a different topic that is pulse modulation if you remember in the initial classes i told you that we will be studying about analog communication and digital communication so this pulse modulation techniques lies in between your analog modulation techniques and digital modulation techniques okay so some people say that these pulse uh, a modulation technique should not be called as modulation technique okay and it is uh, true in some sense also because in uh, pulse modulation we do not actually uh, perform the modulation we represent our signal in a different way so that's why uh, that this controversy is always there uh, whether we should call this uh, pulse modulation as modulation technique or not but still uh, since we are including the word modulation in this pulse modulation so uh, we will take it as pulse modulation technique okay so uh, we start with pulse amplitude modulation in today's class next so students as i just told you that in analog communication technique we had uh, a sinusoidal carrier high frequency sinusoidal carrier okay and uh, in am as well as in uh, fm we have discussed that uh, sinusoidal carrier and it is shown in your slide also okay here you can see that we have high frequency sinusoidal carrier okay which is an analog carrier whereas in case of pulse modulation instead of this high frequency continuous sinusoidal carrier we have pulse train okay so we have carrier in the form of pulses okay train here means we have continuous series of pulses present in this carrier and we call this as you can say carrier pulse train or pulse carrier okay so in simple words you can say that here in pulse modulation our carrier is in the form of pulses instead of sinusoidal wave okay so this is a straight forward uh, simple concept for pulse modulation and obviously as we varied the amplitude of the carrier or the frequency of the carrier or the phase of the carrier in accordance with our modulating signal similarly in pulse modulation also we will vary the characteristics of the pulses or you can say pulse carrier in accordance with our instantaneous value okay and whatever characteristic of the pulsed carrier we vary accordingly we will define that particular pulse modulation technique so if we look at this carrier pulse train carefully we see that in this pulsed carrier what we have we have the amplitude of this pulse say i have shown pulse here so we have amplitude of the pulse we have width of the pulse that can be varied okay the earlier one was amplitude and the third thing is the position of the pulse that is the uh, position at which your pulse is starting so these three things that is amplitude width and position of the pulse can be changed in accordance with the instantaneous value of the modulating signal and if we vary the amplitude of the pulse carrier we call it as pulse amplitude modulation if we vary the width of the pulse in accordance with instantaneous value of modulating signal we call it as pulse width modulation and if we vary the position of the pulse we call it as pulse position modulation okay simple straight forward concept as we have talked about in our amplitude modulation frequency modulation and phase modulation so if you look 
uh, carefully on your slide uh, this is our modulating signal okay so you can see here that this is nothing but pulse amplitude modulation where your pulse amplitude is varying in accordance with your modulating signal so your modulating signal is lying on the top of your pulses so this is pam pulse amplitude modulation okay in the second instance you can see that the width of the pulse is changing as the instantaneous value of the modulating signal is increasing the width of the pulse carrier is increasing and if the uh, value of modulating signal is decreasing then width is decreasing you can see here this is your pulse width modulation okay and the third thing is pulse position modulation though you may find it difficult to visualize uh, the pulse position modulation directly but in the time to come as we progress further you will be able to easily identify the concept of pulse position modulation just for your reference you can see here that when we have zero then the center position is uh, uh, present here for this uh, pulse okay and uh, if you see here that as the amplitude of modulating signal changes the position of the pulse is changing see position with respect to you can say the center point of the pulse so this position keeps on changing depending on your modulating signal value okay this is your pulse position modulation i hope all of you have been able to clearly understand the difference between pulse amplitude modulation pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation okay and uh, whatever we have talked about in uh, amplitude modulation and angle modulation angle modulation includes both your frequency modulation and your phase modulation in the same way your pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation they are categorized as ptm that is your pulse time modulation okay and uh, pulse amplitude modulation is nothing but the same one that is pam fine and the way your amplitude modulation was susceptible to your uh, noise issues same is the case with your pam because uh, uh, your uh, the top of the pulse is varying in accordance with your modulating signal so that's why the effect of noise will be more in case of pam as compared to your pulse time modulation okay because your noise will be affecting the amplitude of the pulses so in case of ptm our information is not present in the amplitude our information is present either in the width or in the position okay so same thing or the same corollary or same analogy that we have talked about in uh, analog modulation technique that applies to pulse modulation techniques also okay so let us proceed forward so after we have discussed the concept of pulse modulation now we specifically talk about pulse amplitude modulation okay we will try to understand the complete concept of pulse amplitude modulation some of the terms you may find a bit awkwardly placed uh, but as we progress further all those terms will be more clarified and your concepts will be clarified okay so here you see in pulse amplitude modulation we have taken modulating signal another name for modulating signal is baseband signal so your modulating signal or the signal without modulation is also called baseband signal and then we have the carrier signal which is in case of pulse modulation is the train of pulses okay so uh, this is our carrier signal so we have taken modulating signal and we have taken the carrier signal fine so what happens in pulse amplitude modulation in pulse amplitude modulation the amplitude of the pulses depends on fd what is fd fd is our modulating signal during the time of the pulse so obviously since our carrier is a pulsed carrier so carrier is not present all the time the carrier is only present when the train of pulses arrive so no carrier part is present in between 
that's why uh, it is written that the amplitude of the pulses will obviously depend on the modulating signal value which is present during the time of the pulse okay so during this pulse time whatever value is present here that will appear in the pulse similarly this value similarly this value and similarly this value okay so not all the values of your modulating signal will appear in your carrier signal obviously because of uh, your discrete nature of uh, pulses okay so that's why we say that in case of pulse amplitude modulated signal or pam signal we have pm signal discrete in time okay discrete means discontinuous okay so your pm signal is discrete in time and continuous in amplitude fine so what is the meaning of saying continuous in amplitude if you look carefully at this second representation of pam signal you see here that your pulses they are discrete in time they are not continuous in time fine okay now if we look at the amplitude domain means the top of the pulses see here your amplitude of the top of the pulse is varying okay though it is also not continuous but for a particular pulse if we say that the top of the pulse is taking the shape of the modulating signal say say it has taken like this okay and now uh, it has taken the shape of the top like this so this portion this portion this portion the top of these pulses is taking the value of modulating signal continuously okay that's why it is saying continuous in amplitude means we are not fixing a value of these top of the pulses okay it is varying however the pulse duration is fixed fine so that way uh, we are saying that your pm signal is discrete in time and continuous in amplitude though it is not continuous in true sense okay it is continuous means uh, your top of the pulse is taking the shape of your modulating signal that's why it is called continuous not continuous in true sense fine this is your pulse amplitude modulated signal so you can see here if you look at this thing carefully that your pam signal this is your pam signal the pink colored pulses this is your pam how are we obtaining this pam signal so this was our modulating signal okay and uh, this was our uh, train of uh, uh, pulses if you multiply these two together okay if you multiply them together then obviously we will have such kind of thing okay so we get pam signal by simply multiplying our modulating signal with our carrier train of pulses fine this is how we obtain our pam signal now one more thing you are you must be noticing here that the pam signal that i have discussed it is different from the pam signal which is shown here at the bottom of this slide so here what is the difference though we can say that your modulating signal is present on the top of this but the top of the pulses is not taking the exact shape of our modulating signal okay but the top of the pulse is uh, constant its height is varying but not the amplitude okay so we have uh, two different versions of pam signal uh, i'll talk about this thing in the next slide okay before we move to next slide there is one more concept that i need to introduce here and that concept is your sampling theorem so students i told you that in case of pam what we have we have things discrete in time okay our modulating signal it was continuous in time and continuous in amplitude but my pulse train it was discrete it, it was uh, discontinuous in time 
okay and if we multiply them together then obviously the portion for which we do not have any carrier signal we will have zero value after multiplication okay means after uh, your pam signal also becomes discrete in time so in a way i should say that what i am doing in pam with the help of uh, this uh, pulsed carrier i am sampling my modulating signal my modulating signal which was continuous in time as well as continuous in uh, amplitude with the help of this uh, uh, discrete timed pulses i am sampling my modulating signal in other words i will say that with the help of these uh, train of pulses i am obtaining certain you can say sampled value of the modulating signal i am not in a position to have the entire modulating signal i am sampling my modulating signal at some defined instances of time and those uh, instances of time is defined by the presence of our pulses in the pulsed carrier fine i hope all of you have been able to understand so in a way with the help of pulsed carrier or with the help of train of pulses i am sampling my modulating signal so that's why we need to understand what is sampling theorem okay or how do we sample our modulating signal so let me tell you students the concept of pulse amplitude modulation and the concept of sampling they go both go together okay so don't get confused things will be more clarified as we progress further okay so right now you can say that obviously we need to define the frequency of our carrier signal and since our carrier signal here is a train of pulses so we need to decide the frequency of the carrier pulse train so this frequency of the carrier pulse train is defined decided by the sampling theorem now what is sampling theorem according to sampling theorem if our modulating signal okay modulating signal means our information signal is band limited to b hertz band limited means the maximum frequency or the highest frequency which is present in our modulating signal that is say b hertz that's why we say that our modulating signal is band limited to b hertz if such is the case then the sampling frequency sampling frequency means the frequency of carrier pulse train okay the sampling frequency must be 2b hertz means the twice of the highest frequency of the modulating signal okay so let me uh, interpret this thing again in simple uh, simple words if this is my modulating signal which has some highest frequency say b hertz and i want to sample this modulating signal with the help of train of pulses or you can say carrier pulse train in that case i will have to take the frequency of this pulse carrier equal to 2 times b only then i will be able to successfully sample okay and this is the minimum sample frequency this is the minimum sample frequency you can have greater than that so at least twice of b must be the frequency of our carrier pulse train at least so mind these words i have written at least so the frequency of the carrier pulse train must be two times b hertz if my modulating signal frequency is band limited to b hertz i hope you have understood this thing and uh, further things will be more clear to all of you as we progress further fine hope all of you have uh, understood this thing so you must note the word at least okay so this is the minimum frequency for carrier pulse train you must also note the term or the word band limited means my modulating signal it must be band limited it cannot be uh, unlimited in terms of bandwidth okay 
so your bandwidth of modulating signal must be limited if you want to sample that okay next so as i just told you that in case of pam we can uh, have two forms of uh, pam waveform one we call as natural sampling and another is called as flat top sampling the waveform i showed you in the previous slide also included both so when the top of the pulse takes the exact shape of the modulating signal we call it as natural sampling okay so if you directly multiply your modulating signal with your carrier pulse strain so obviously the top of these pulses will take or will assume the amplitude of your modulating signal so we call that as natural sampling fine this is one i have shown this here in this figure as well okay next is flat top sampling so flat top sampling means obviously i'll be sampling and where will i sample i'll sample at the beginning of the pulse okay i'll sample at the beginning of the pulse when my pulse begins okay and whatever value i have sampled at the beginning of the pulse i'll keep that value constant during the pulse duration you see here uh, in second figure it is more clear here say i sampled here then whatever value i uh, noticed here i took that value constant for the pulse duration then i again sampled here the pulse value was constant at that instant similarly here so these are known as flat top sampling means the top of the pulses is not having the exact shape of the modulating signal instead they are flat topped so your pam waveform can be present in two ways in natural sampling way and in the flat top sampling way i hope all of you have been able to understand that now next point next point is that if you carefully notice this modulating signal this modulating signal is present in the positive side of your graph okay positive side means the values of modulating signal they are positive there is no negative value for your modulating signal present here means your modulating signal is not like this where we have uh, positive values as well as negative values okay so in case of pulse amplitude modulation your baseband signal that is your signal without modulation that is your modulating signal is uh, kept with only positive polarity okay so that is deliberately done because in case of your pam uh, the transmission of bipolar pulses if we have bipolar signal means positive as well as negative if we consider such kind of modulating signal and if you then multiply your pulses with that bipolar signal then you will have pulses in positive direction as well as in pulses in negative direction you see this is present here in this figure you have pulses in the positive and you have pulses in the negative direction also so transmission of such uh, bipolar pulses is inconvenient so here also you can see that these are the pulses in negative direction also so in order to avoid that inconvenience at the circuit level what we do we use a clamping circuit you all know what is the purpose of clamping circuit our clamping circuit it clamps our voltage value to a new voltage okay you can say some dc shift is given to our signal so if we add dc to our modulating signal say if we add some dc some constant value to here say positive dc then this entire signal will be shifted upwards and your modulating signal then becomes like this so now we have all the positive values once we have done clamping so after clamping we get such kind of modulating signal or the baseband signal okay so this is how we obtain our uh, pam waveform through natural sampling and through flat top sampling i think uh, all of you have been able to clarify your things up till this point okay
so students as i just told you that there are two forms of sampling in case of pam one is your natural sampling and another is flat top sampling so now we discuss natural sampling in detail okay as i told you that uh, in natural sampling your pam signal the top of pam signal pulses it follows the natural waveform that's why we call it as natural sampling and natural waveform of with signal natural waveform of the modulating signal okay so we represent our carrier pulse train with fct mathematically whose amplitude is a okay whose duration is tau and whose time period is ts so if you look at the figure carefully you see here that its amplitude has been taken as a the duration in time has been taken as tau and time period is ts okay means the duration between uh, the two consecutive pulses is ts and since uh, we have periodic uh, nature for our uh, train of pulses so this is a periodic uh, pulse train fine so that's why we have a time period ts so here i'll try to explain mathematically the concept of natural sampling and it is very very important and students let me tell you one more thing i told you that your concept of pam and concept of sampling sampling theorem they are correlated okay though specifically the definition of sampling theorem i'll again uh, come to it in the later classes but right now whatever i am telling you uh, you should try to comprehend that fine so many concepts that you have learned in your previous classes they will also be encountered here so here we are discussing natural sampling mathematically okay and as i told you our carrier pulse train is periodic and if we want to represent our periodic signal mathematically in frequency domain then which tool do we use we use fourier series so we know that fourier series helps us in representing our uh, uh, signal periodic signal okay in frequency domain so we all have studied fourier series in our mathematics also and in our signal and system subject also so this is our fourier series uh, representation okay so vt is the periodic train of pulses signal that we have represented in terms of your fourier series so this uh, is your a tau upon t not what is a is the amplitude your tau is the duration and your uh, t not is the time period of the pulse train of pulse so here see i am assuming a train of pulses so this is one this is another pulse and so on fine and its duration uh, or oh sorry time period for generalized case we have taken as t not okay and tau is the duration of the pulse so this tau is this one your t not is the time period a is the amplitude of this pulse so if you take that this is how we represent in the terms of fourier series sign fine so what is cn cn is your fourier series uh, coefficient fine so it is 2a tau upon t not summation n equal to 0 to infinity cn cosine of 2 pi nt upon t not okay so you must have uh, easily noticed this uh, concept of fourier series which you studied in the previous class also okay the cn that is your fourier series coefficient is uh, your uh, equal to sin n pi tau upon t not divided by n pi tau upon t not so this fourier series uh, coefficient value has been obtained by calculation okay though it has been shown directly here in the coming slide i'll explain that how have we obtained this okay and if you look at this thing carefully this is your function sin x upon x sin x upon x and what is sin x upon x it can be represented as sin x you must have studied this thing in your fourier uh transform concept okay in fact uh, this is sin pi x upon pi x and it gives us 
your equivalent sync pulse. Fine. This was just for your knowledge purpose. I'll not go into that detail. So I come back to again Fourier series representation for our uh, periodic pulse train. Next. So what we have uh, uh, assumed now for our carrier pulse train, we have taken VT equal to FCT. Okay. So we have taken our uh, generalized uh, voltage VT as FCT. That is your train of pulse. We have taken amplitude as one. So this A equal to one. And the time period we have taken as TS. So T note has been represented as TS. So if we substitute those values, we get this one. So instead of VT, we have FCT equal to, since A has become one, that's why we get tau upon TS, then plus two tau upon TS. And we have expanded this now. In the previous slide, what we had, we had CN and N was varying from zero to infinity. Now we are substituting the values of N. That is C0, C1, C2, like that. So if we do that, we get C1 cos 2 pi T upon TS, C2, and so on. Okay, and this I already told you that this was our Fourier series coefficient CN. Fine. So in the uh, slide which will come after this slide, I'll uh, explain how have we obtained this Fourier series coefficient. Okay, then things will be more clear. Fine. So we have represented our train of pulses with Fourier series representation. Okay, now how do we obtain PAM signal? In the PAM signal, I told you that we multiply. We multiply our modulating signal and we multiply uh, it with our carrier pulse train. Okay, so obviously multiplication is a mathematical function. So we multiply this and this. So we have already seen FCT. We will be multiplying FCT with our modulating signal. So if we multiply on the right hand side, we will have FT in all the terms after multiplication. So we have FT here, FT here, FT here. So FT has been multiplied in this. So we get FT times FCT mathematically as this expression. Okay. I hope it is clear to each and every student. And as I told you that for uh, perfect sampling, what we want, we want that the frequency of this carrier pulse strain, it must be at least two times the highest modulating signal frequency. Okay. So if we assume FM as the highest modulating signal frequency, so we take twice of FM that, okay. And if we take reverse of one by two FM, it gives us time period. So time period, it must be one by two FM and it is defined by our sampling theorem as I explained in the previous class. So we'll have to substitute this value of TS in this expression. So if we do that, what do we get? We get this. So we get FT into FC equal to tau FT upon TS plus two tau upon TS and where your TS is nothing but one by two FM. Fine. So this is how what we are doing here. We are representing our PAM signal or the output of the multiplier signal mathematically. Okay. And if uh, you observe its graph, it looks like this where we have multiplied these two and we get this one, which is nothing but your natural sampled PAM signal. Okay. And this is what this is time domain representation. You see here, this is time domain representation of our uh, PAM signal. Fine. If we want to see the frequency domain representation of our PAM signal, the way we uh, represented our AM signal and FM signal in frequency domain also, then we will have to take help of this expression. So this expression is in time domain, okay? But we have represented this time domain expression in terms of Fourier series, okay? And we know that Fourier series uh, representation is a combination of sine and cosine. So we have cosine thing here, okay? So uh, if we look at this thing carefully, then we can easily represent this expression uh, in frequency domain also. How can we do that? You see here, my FT is the modulating signal. Okay. And uh, this tau upon TS is a constant term. 
okay so it means this first term is nothing but if we ignore this constant it is nothing but some scaled version of modulating signal that's it okay now you see this term here we have c1 is a constant ft is the modulating signal okay and this is cosine term present because of uh, your fourier series representation and we know that your uh, uh, how to represent cosine function in time and in uh, frequency so in frequency domain your cosine function will be represented by an impulse at a particular frequency so this is at 2 fm so it will be in frequency domain equal to 2 fm okay but since with this cosine we have multiplied ft ft is nothing but my modulating signal okay and you already know Uh, through amplitude modulation concept that if we multiply two signals having some frequencies say its frequency is say uh f1 say and we have multiplied uh, ft and this so we will get the sum frequency and the difference frequency okay so we will get twice of fm plus f1 twice of fm plus f1 okay and we will also get twice of m fm minus fn we'll get this similarly if we go further here also two terms are multiplied so here we'll have 4 of fm plus your highest frequency of this ft and 4 of fm minus this so means every term of this expression will give us some frequency and difference frequency okay and uh, the center frequency for that will be the corresponding cosine sinusoidal frequency that here it is 2 fm here it is 4 fm and this is our original modulating signal in frequency domain okay so now let us see if my original modulating signal in frequency domain looks like this say this is the spectrum of my original modulating signal okay fine now what will be the spectrum of this ft into fc fine this ft into fc t is nothing but our pam signal this was our time time domain representation if we want to represent in frequency domain it looks like this and how have we obtained this from this so let me erase all the ink so that we can carefully see see this was our nothing but modulating signal it has been represented as it is like this because my original modulating signal is this one this was your modulating signal is added and subtracted corresponding to twice of fm okay so 2 fm it so now your modulating signal will be centered around 2 fm so you see here this is 2 fm fine so this is your modulating signal reproduced here and this is the mirror image okay so you can see here that your uh, frequency domain represented uh, modulated modulating signal is centered around 2 fm so here again your modulating signal is centered around 4 fm then 6 fm like this okay i hope all of you have been able to understand this so this was my original modulating signal in frequency domain and this is my naturally sampled pam signal in frequency domain which has the modulating signal and some additional component so this is my frequency domain representation of pam signal in frequency domain okay and this representation frequency domain we also call we do it with the help of a parameter we call it as spectral density okay so you can see here that this is the frequency domain representation of my pam signal i hope all of you have been able to understand that so if you look at the frequency domain representation fine what what is our aim when we want to demodulate my aim is to get the modulating signal original modulating signal back so what will i do i will pass this signal simply through a low pass filter whose cut off frequency will be equal to fm so means if i pass this signal through a low pass filter every other thing will be removed 
okay and i'll get this original modulating signal so that is the beauty of uh, visualizing your signal in uh, frequency domain by looking at this pam signal in time domain we could not make out how can we demodulate that but if we look at that thing in frequency domain we could easily make out that this is my original modulating signal which can be obtained back just by passing it through a low pass filter okay so this was my mathematical uh, representation of naturally sampled uh, pam signal okay i hope all of you have uh, understood uh, this so as i told you in the previous slide that i'll be explaining that how actually we have obtained this expression for our uh, carrier pulse train i'll go further and tell you in the next slide so see if you look carefully this is nothing but my carrier pulse train whose duration is uh, tau whose uh, time period is nothing but t here my time period is taken from the center of the pulses it doesn't matter okay so this is my carrier pulse train okay so this uh, pulse train is uh, also called as gate function fine so you must have uh, di discussed this gate function or studied this gate function in your signal and system subject as well as in mathematics so we have to represent this gate function or uh, carrier pulse train with the help of trigonometric fourier series so let us see that so if we define our uh, train of pulses mathematically it is equal to a for uh, the duration minus tau by 2 to tau by 2 you see here it is from minus tau by 2 to tau by 2 equal to a and it, it is zero zero for the rest of the period fine so if i take this as the time period so for this one time period this is how i define that over one time period fine so obviously i have to represent this uh, in the form of fourier series uh, comprising of sine and cosine function and this is how we know my fourier series look like a0 plus a1 cos omega0 t a2 cos 2 omega0 t and so on so we have cos and sine okay so if we go further so we can represent our fourier series in compact fashion like this that we have a0 plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n omega0 t and b n sin n omega not t and we have to determine the value of a n b n and a not in order to find out the value of f t okay and we all know how to find out the value of a not a n and b n so your a not is nothing but the average value so it can be obtained by 1 by t integration f t dt then your a n is twice of t integration f t cos n omega not t dt for b n you need to integrate with respect to ft sin n omega not t dt this is how we obtain a not an and bn i am just hurriedly revising assuming that you all have uh, studied and understood these concepts in your previous classes uh, in much detail next so uh, once we uh, defined a not an and bn now we need to obtain these values a not an and bn with respect to our train of pulses where uh, that is your gate function so we will substitute these values in this uh, fourier series representation and if we do that corresponding to uh, this we now find out a not so for one time period we know that the value of uh, pulse or the top of the pulse or amplitude of the pulse is equal to a okay and duration is over tau so you get a not as a tau by t if you find out a n by integrating and applying that same formula your ft is nothing but a because of your gate function or uh, carrier pulse strain we get a n as this one twice of a tau upon t sin n omega not t tau by 2 and this one fine and if you find out b n you get those values as zero so it means we will have only an existing and a not bn is zero so if you substitute these values of a not and an in the expression that we saw in the previous slide you get this fine and this is the same expression that we saw uh, when we talked about pulse amplitude modulation and this sin n omega not tau by 2 this is nothing but your cn that we had represented so if i show you that 
see this was our cn so this is how we obtain uh, uh, cn or the fourier series representation and we can represent our train pulses with the help of fourier series i hope it is clear to each and every student so students after discussing this uh, trigonometric fourier series representation now let us move forward so since we have talked about natural sampling now we will talk about flat top sampling though i have explained to you uh, previously also but for the sake of completeness i'll talk about flat top sampling as i told you in case of flat top the top of the pulses will remain flat okay and what will be the value of uh, this flat top uh, pulses this value will be the value at the beginning of the pulse so wherever we sample at the beginning the same value is maintained constant during the pulse duration so then we say that the top of the pam signal pulses they are flat and these pulses have constant amplitude within the pulse duration interval or pulse duration so this is the pulse interval or pulse duration during this period we have constant amplitude fine so uh, see one thing you should uh, notice here that if we talk about natural sampling in the natural sampling the top of the pulses will taking the shape of the original modulating signal in a way i should say that we have tried to preserve the originality of our modulating signal in pulse amplitude modulated signal but in case of our flat top sampling pam signal we are not maintaining the naturality we are you can say introducing some distortion or some deliberate distortion into our signal which is transmitted because it is different from the natural one or it is different from the actual one so that's why we say that in case of flat top sampling pam signal since we are making pulse amplitude constant so some distortion has been introduced and this distortion is deliberate from our side so obviously once we demodulate uh, this uh, pam flat top pam signal then we will have to remove this distortion for actual demodulation and we will discuss about thing uh, of this uh, flat top sampling when we talk about the demodulation okay that is one thing another important thing dear students is i am telling you from the day one in this subject that without mathematics we cannot understand communication on paper we cannot build our concept in our mind okay so uh, that way uh, you know uh, here i am also integrating mathematics so as to build your concept i explained that thing in the previous slide also and here also i am telling you that your flat topped pam signal that is your this one it can be considered as the convolution okay you must have uh, studied the concept of convolution in your mathematics as well as in signal and system subject so flat top pam signal is considered as the convolution of the impulse sampled signal and the non periodic pulse pt okay what does it mean i will explain in the uh, next slide okay so your flat top pm signal can be considered as convolution of the impulse sampled signal and your non periodic pulse pt let us talk about this this is what we need to discuss here see if i want to define my sampling ideally in that case my signal will be sampled with the help of impulse not with the help of pulse this is my pulse pulse has certain width whereas impulse has no width if you make the width of your pulse 10 to 0 it becomes impulse okay so ideally your signal must be sampled with the help of impulse okay that will give us exact value of the sample okay so that's why your imp uh, impulse sampled signal has been uh, taken here impulse sampled signal ideal sampled signal okay so this is my impulse sampled signal if you 
uh, obtain its frequency domain representation, then you can see here uh, in the way I explained in the Fourier series representation and the spectral uh, representation of your PAM signal. In the same way, your uh, sample signal is shown as the uh, repeated uh, spectrum like this centered around your uh, zero frequency, then twice of omega m, then four omega m, so on. Okay. Then this is our pulse. So as I told you, pulse has certain duration. So pulse is our rectangular pulse. And in your signal and system, you must have obtained the uh, Fourier transform of uh, rectangular pulse. This is a single pulse, non-periodic. So if you take its Fourier transform, it looks like this. So Fourier transform of rectangular pulse is defined in the form of sink. You must have studied this. It looks like this, like this. This is a sink pulse. Fine. So same kind of, this is nothing but this is same one. It has not been completely shown, but uh, this portion is nothing but this one. Fine. So I have represented uh, my impulse sample signal in time, my pulse, single pulse, non-periodic pulse in time, then this impulse sample signal in frequency, this is your sync pulse in frequency, fine. And now in PAM, what we do, we, as I told you, flat top PAM will be the convolution of this and this. So if you do the convolution, you get this one. This is convolution operation, not the multiplication. And this is no train of pulses. This is single pulse. So, you know, in convolution, what happens? We multiply with the time shifted uh, pulses. So if we do that, we get this flat top PM sample signal. Fine. Now, if we do convolution in time, what do we get? We get multiplication in the frequency. So means these two will be multiplied and we get this in frequency domain if we see to it. So, if you multiply these two, this one and this in frequency, you get this. And this is nothing but the multiplication of these two. Okay, I hope all of you have been able to understand that. Fine. So now you see that this is my output after multiplication in frequency. So these lobes, you can see that these lobes have been distorted. Okay, so this distortion I was talking about, this was my original signal. Okay, and because of this pulse, my lobes have been distorted and that distortion has been represented by P omega, which is nothing but it is the multiplication with this um, convolution in time with this pulsed signal. Okay, so uh, this was your uh, graphical representation and mathematical interpretation of your flat top sampling. I hope all of you have been able to understand this concept. Next. So students, after uh, doing this, now let us move to uh, your pulse amplitude modulator circuit. That is your PAM modulator. And uh, once we have discussed all the concepts in detail in previous slide, now it will be very, very uh, simple thing for us to explain uh, uh, PAM modulator and uh, PMD modulator. See, your PAM modulator, it is nothing but we can simply use simple emitter follower circuit. Okay, you all know in analog electronics, we have studied emitter follower circuit where the output follows the emitter. Okay, so we are taking output from the emitter side and uh, whatever signal is there, it appears across the uh, this emitter and we take output from the emitter. So that's why it is called as emitter follower circuit. Okay, so your output is taken across emitter. Fine. So here we have two input signals. One is modulating signal, okay, which is applied to uh, the base of this NPN transistor. Fine. And uh, we have also applied another signal that we call as clock signal. Okay. This clock is also applied as another input to the base of transistor. And all you know that this clock signal is nothing but it is resembling our. Uh, uh, train of pulses or you can say carrier pulse train fine so in simple words if i uh, try to explain that uh, with the help of this emitter follower circuit we are trying to simply multiply my modulating signal and clock 
and I want to get output as my PAM. So it is behaving like uh, a multiplier circuit. Okay, so let us see how actually we are uh, uh, operating with this circuit. So if you look at this thing carefully, we know that how does a clock look like? Your clock looks like this, that you have high value, then low value and uh, so on. We may call it as high level. It is your low level, then H and this is nothing but these are clock pulses, periodic clock pulses. Okay, so what will happen that uh, when your clock is absent means there will be no signal here means your modulating signal will appear directly to the emitter. Okay, your emitter will follow your modulating signal during uh, when there is no clock. Okay, so in the absence of clock your output follows input and your uh, output is taken across the emitter means whatever is at the input it appears at the output. Okay, and uh, for how much duration? Not for the entire duration. It is for the duration for which clock is absent. Okay, means uh, for this duration only. Okay, your output will be present. And uh, when your clock value is zero in the absence of clock. Fine. And uh, when the clock is uh, present means when the clock is uh, at high level, then uh, there is no signal. Fine. So this is how we have uh, uh, tried to obtain a PM signal by following uh, uh, emitter follower uh, circuit. Okay. And uh, let me tell you students uh, here, obviously we can decide the clock level uh, uh, the way we want to obtain the output. We have taken the high level of the clock as zero. Okay. In fact, my clock is like this. Uh, it is defined like this. This is high. This is low like this. Fine. So this is zero. This is some minus value. This is zero. This is uh, some minus. Obviously zero is positive with respect to minus one. Okay. So here I am saying that uh, uh, my uh, clock is having high level which is zero. Fine. And uh, clock is negative means Obviously, you know that your transistor works either in the cutoff region or saturation region or active region. So when my clock value is uh, uh, at negative level, it will be having such negative voltage so that my transistor is cut off. So my transistor is cut off means no output will be obtained. No output will be obtained means this portion will be there. No output. Okay. And when uh, my clock level will be high, high means the zero volt. Okay, means my transistor will not be cut off. My modulating signal will be presenting as it is, means this one. So this is how my uh, PAM modulator circuit works. And uh, obviously uh, the clock frequency will be nothing but it will decide the desired carrier pulse strain frequency. Okay, and obviously the frequency of the carrier pulse strain or the clock frequency will be decided by what? Sampling theorem in order that we can transmit our signal uh, in a proper way through uh, PAM, that is pulse amplitude modulated signal. Okay. So uh, thank you students. That's all for today's class. We will continue with the PAM demodulation in the next class.